the situation that I saw recently that made me like really start thinking like, man, we got to get fucking ice in here for an interview ASAP is that I seen a video of a certain somebody talking shit about you saying that you fell down at the Nipsey Memorial and that's how you got hurt. And then you're, that's the situation you're describing. Where Damn, you that's what he said at the Nipsey. I didn't even hear that part. I that was because he deleted it by the time you saw it, right? Yeah. I know. I, I seen it, but I didn't even look at it. I just seen him say something and then I went off. I think he and said, then he deleted it. Yeah, he said, like, dude fell down at the Nipsey Menor- Memorial and cut himself on some glass, and he trying to act like he got shot. Yeah, I've seen that shit. Then when I went off on his bitch ass, he deleted it. Shout out to Bosco. Yeah, you had beef with him for, like, 10 years, right? Ain't no shout outs to Bosco. <laughs> we don't shout that whole ass nigga out. Cause that nigga come to Inglewood. He, is, he lives in Inglewood, right? No, he don't. No? Hell no. But he's from there, right? He was. Have you always had problems with this dude or no? Nah. No. Nah. It's just... That's when he turned into a little hoe. But for people out there who don't know what I'm talking about, you had beef with him since all the way back with that Rosemont situation we are talking about. So this is a long-standing disdain that you guys apparently have for each other, right? It was never a beef. He said some slick shit and got beat up, and that's what made it a beef. Right. If you want to call it that. So have you, you haven't seen him in many years? Never seen him since. Damn, crazy. Time to come to Inglewood. I mean, he might have a response to this. I doubt it. <laughs> he did delete it, though, so apparently he realized he was wrong about it. I mean, I, I thought that was pretty foul. Even from Bosco, who's known for being pretty foul on the internet, I was like, damn, you're really going to give this guy a hard time for getting shot or something along those lines? He wasn't thinking. Yeah, fair enough. Um, shit, so, how, yeah, what, what have you been on recently? What's, what's, what's the life of Ice Burgundy like, bro? I've been fucking around in Detroit making this new music. Mm-hmm. Then you do have, you still to this day though, like your music is is hard. I was listening to a lot of it in the lead up to this. It's like I'm still I'm still a fan, just like I was back in the day. Good, good. This new shit is even harder. I like it. Like my my shit back in the day, I was just rapping like I told you. I didn't even it just happened like that. I met Waka, did a song. He's like, come on, let's go on tour. And next thing you know, I'm in the studio and I ain't even know what I wanted to rap about. This new shit. I don't know exactly what I'm going for. What do you consider your lane as a rapper? Like your style? Oh, it's uh, money motivated music. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you want to get some money. I mean, Do music. I'm listening to you on songs with like Lonnie and Drago and Bino and stuff, and it's like you guys all have a very dope chemistry like it's, it's hard to even put my finger on exactly what it is and shit but you guys are all like you're all rapping different but there's like a similarity to what everybody's doing and there's like a very like cohesive flow amongst everybody yeah we just be on the same shit that's why so and then you know everybody's different so we come together but you're right it is a good chemistry there yeah definitely then my little young niggas how old are you at this point 33 33. I'm 35, so I feel you. You feel me? Mm. Yeah, I'm a little young niggas. It's hard to compete with these young guns. For sure. I let them have it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start a label, though. You are? Like, I can uh, spot talent good. You feel me? Mm. Everybody I listen to, they end up blowing up. I'll be catching them early, too, before they be anything. You got that A&R gene in your, in your mind? Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that I think have that and don't realize it. Like a lot of people who are just genuine music fans, and I realize like that this dude is the type of dude that would be KOD, able to. KOD May third. Yes, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Be on the lookout for. You're that. going to the strip club May third. No, KOD. Oh. Uh, well, we going to King hey. Diamond, so. Get that no. motherfucking album May third. I'm on that motherfucker. Oh, the Shoreline show on the third. You gonna be there at that? Yeah. That's what's up. You're like the rare blood that's wrapped up in this whole little Crip universe. Damn. That's what it is now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Since Nipsey died, it's a Crip universe? No. We, we, I thought we still, I thought the Bloods had it. You don't think a Shoreline is like a Crip rap group? No. It don't occur to you to be like that? Hell no. I seen some double C's and they, they, they can't write a word B's like brick. <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they, they be throwing up Bloods and Shoreline is just a cool group, you know? Okay. I see no I, I I never heard none of them say anything about gangbanging really, but I'll see OGZ like put something on his Instagram story and it's like he'll write the word like brick and it's B R I C C. I'm like, uh, all right. I don't know enough about gangbanging, but I'll assume that means something. 
He just said something earlier. What did he put on that shit? He does always do this. It's something too. bracken or something. Bragging. He yeah. said bragging? Yeah. You know, we all having fun with it. You know, we all YG fans we and shit. We all having fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> These days. Hey. Oh, shit. What up? Uh, what got lighter? <laughs> I don't got a lighter. Wait. Yeah, I do. Pants too tight. Oh, I got you on the no cap lighter, too. The no cap. That's how no you know. Bat. You know that blunt's going to smoke good. It's being lit with no cap. No cap. Um. So you still smoking weed? Yeah. You off all the other drugs or what? You leave that behind or you still you still with the activities? Oh, uh, what other drugs? I don't know. There's a lot of other ones out there, man. I don't sip syrup no more. You're over it? Hell yeah. Why? What happened? There's a drought? I came too dependent on it. Like, if I didn't want to drink, I had to drink. Mm. My stomach would be all fucked up. So I'm like, damn, I'm like a real dope fiend. I got to quit this shit. Yeah. That definitely happens. It all seems fun until you start seeing dudes in the studio at like two in the morning freaking the fuck out because they can't get any juice. And you start to realize like, Talking about I'm a shit on myself, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it was. You were at That's risk how. of shitting on yourself? All type of shit. Hell yeah, my stomach used to be fucked up. Really? If I didn't drink. That's why I, if, if I didn't drink, I had to stand all day. Yeah. Because I know my shit is going to be fucked up. That shit get to going. Oh, man. You can't be shitting out in public places and shit. Oh, you're against that? Yeah, hell yeah. I'll take a shit anywhere. I'm, that's out. That's how I judge somebody is how many times you had to shit outdoors in your life. Yeah. How many, t- <laughs> <laughs> how many times you done it? I don't know how many times I've done it. I've done it, but it ain't boo. I've been doing it. I've done it hella times. Not, not in my, my adult life now, but like back when I was riding BMX bikes, it's like you would be hungover, go out, ride bikes, you're out, you're, it's hot as fuck. All of a sudden, you guys got to go post up behind a dumpster somewhere and just take a shit on the ground. But I, um, that's, that's a real shit. skill. Yeah. Yeah, that's a skill. I ain't never got down like that. I was Street talking about shit. like at a Burger King bathroom oh, no. or something. No, I mean, that's bougie. Anybody could just walk on a Burger King and take a shit. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's too easy. <laughs> no, nah, but you know, that's the problem is L.A. is too urban. There's not that many opportunities to take a street shit. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from like right outside Boston, but more in the fucking, you know, you could just like, the, all right, this is the biggest difference between like L.A. and where I'm from, from my p- perspective, is that where I grew up, if there's like a supermarket, you could go behind the supermarket and there would be all loading docks and like some trees and all this kind of shit. So it's like you you would go like behind somewhere and you would see, you might not see somebody doing something fucked up, but you would see remnants that there was somebody doing something fucked up. You find like a needle, a bunch of old condoms, some fucking porno magazine, some shit like that. In L.A., I don't really know where, if I was like a young person, where I would be like doing fucked up shit at because there's you can't like go behind the supermarket. You gotta go to the hood. There you go. Go to the park. The park is the park is where it goes down. Number one get off. A skate park. I don't know what they doing up there. I can only imagine. This does taste crazy. <laughs> it's like fucking Starburst, bro. It's the blue raspberry. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. You got to smell that shit. It smell and taste like what it smoke like. It really does. He smelled the blunt. <laughs> you got to smell the weed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tasted it, bro. I was like, man, this shit crazy. Uh, shit. Where do you stay at in LA these days? Inglewood, Glendale. Glen- very f- different places, very far apart. Yeah. But you you go back and forth. Then I'm Glendale is forth where you like stay at, leaf. and then you go back to the hood. Yeah. That's what's up. How did the the Nipsey thing affect you? Was that crazy to find out about? Yeah, it was crazy. It really didn't affect me like that, but it's a sad situation. You know him? Nah. I met him before, but I don't know him, you know? <coughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't think I ever tasted weed that tastes more like the name of the strain than that. I've never tasted weed that tastes more like bubble gum than that. They probably actually like put bubble gum on the shit or what? I don't know. I just smoke it. I don't make it. No, yeah. I don't know what the fuck they do. Me neither. But I feel like I just ate a fucking handful of Skittles. That's the best shit out right now. How much you smoke a day? Uh, depends on the day. Mm. Somewhere <coughs> in between a 7 to a 14. Grams. Yeah. That's respectable. What? Uh, how you feel about all this truce shit that's been going on? You think it's realistic? Truce? 
Yeah, like all the people, the gangs coming together and shit. Everybody seems very optimistic about uh, LA. Ain't no truce. You don't believe it? Hell no. Not even a slowdown in violence? It might be a little slowdown. Ain't no truce, though. Mm-hmm. A lot of people who don't give a fuck. Yeah. Something, you just gotta wait for something to happen. I mean, somebody got popped at the funeral procession. Yeah, see? What kind of truce is that? Mm. 